If there were three words to describe Dash's kickoff to the first quarter, fiscal year 2017, they would be not too shabby. Hi, I'm Amanda B. Johnson, and you're watching Dash Detailed. Let's get started with Dash in the news. And there's been a lot this week. At the height of last week's price spike, Dash's price surge was written about in LeapRate.com, where the staff writer mentioned forthcoming developments such as 12.1 and Evolution. And next, there were five, yes, count them, five media appearances by Dash's so-called director of finance, Ryan Taylor. Taylor gave a live interview to a reporter at Cheddar.com, Cheddar being a daily live feed from the New York Stock Exchange of all places. The subscription-only Cheddar interview has not yet been released at the time of recording, but Ryan reports that once he gets a copy of it, he will be sure to tweet it. Taylor then gave text-based interviews to Andrew Sachs MacLeod at Finance Feeds, Diana Goh at Coin Journal, a staff writer at Econo Times, and Avi Mizrahi at Finance Magnates. In other publications, Dash saw its second mention at Coindesk, this time from author Willy Wu, in a piece entitled Volatility and Liquidity, How Bitcoin Compares to Its Crypto Competitors. And I, Amanda B. Johnson, gave an audio interview to the Future Tech podcast hosted by Richard Jacobs. And now to development updates. Some have asked whether the minimum hardware requirement to run a masternode in forthcoming 12.1 will be increased. Dash's core development team has responded with an affirmative no. So the minimum hardware requirement for running a masternode in 12.1 will remain a one gigabyte of RAM piece of hardware or higher. In other development updates, Dash developer Chaplin has posted that he is now testing KeepKey masternode support on testnet. This means that in addition to Trezor masternode support, which is set to be released with 12.1, you will also be able to host a masternode on a KeepKey hardware wallet once Chaplin finishes the mainnet testing two to three weeks after the release of 12.1. Also in development updates, a new section has been added to the forum at dash.org slash forum, and it's called Project Updates. There you'll see that Dash core team member Daniel Diaz, aka Minotaur, has created progress update threads for the Mycelium wallet integration, the Git Guild CTM, that is cryptocurrency teller machine projects, the Fiat to Dash ATM compliance project from Cogent Law, and the legal research project being conducted by attorney Marco Santori. And now to business news. There are two businesses newly accepting Dash. The first is Contraband Coffee, which brews organic, artisan batches of coffee available to be shipped anywhere in the United States. And the second merchant is Hemp Sweet. Hemp Sweet offers medicinal CBD oils as well as hemp oil body lotions and offers shipping to nearly anywhere in the world. Now to price movement. The Dash to US dollar price is currently $12.80 per coin. This makes for a total market cap of just under $90 million, with a 24-hour trade volume of $1.7 million, with an available coin supply of just over 7 million Dash. Now today's market cap is down significantly from what it was just seven days ago, which you may recall was about $120 million in market cap. But if you zoom out a mere seven days before that, that is two weeks ago, you'll see that Dash's market cap was then under $70 million, meaning that a 25% price increase has held from then to today. And in social happenings. An introduction to Dash Meetup has been scheduled for January 26th to take place in Suwannee, Georgia. And that's the state Georgia rather than the country Georgia. It will be hosted by Jeffrey Thompson and take place at the George Pierce Park Community Center at 6 p.m. Also in social happenings, dear old Ryan Taylor has tweeted that he is slated to speak about Dash at the North American Bitcoin Conference on January the 18th. The conference takes place January 16th, 17th, and 18th, and Dash will also have a visitor's booth open on all of the days for anybody to stop by. 
And this nifty infographic has recently been released by Redditor One's Perspective. The infographic illustrates how Dash is different from Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies with its second tier masternode network, private and instant confirmations, and so forth. You'll find the link to the infographic as well as all links in today's show in the description below on this YouTube page. And to network statistics. Today's masternode count is 4,293, which is up 61 masternodes from last week's 4,232. There are roughly 430 non-masternode full nodes running at this time, making for a grand total of 4,721 full nodes on the network. And in mining, today marks a new all-time high hash rate, which is 2.09 terahashes per second. Hurrah! Masternode owners may also care to know that there are some new pre and regular proposals in Dash's treasury at this time. Some of the proposers are brand new to Dash, and so they may appreciate receiving your feedback on their pre-proposal threads. And finally, a little PSA. Remember to back up your Dash wallet, particularly if you use the Dash QT slash core wallet to be able to mix your coins. Remember that the backup of the QT wallet only backs up the next thousand addresses that it would have generated. Now that seems like a lot, but if you do a lot of coin mixing with a lot of rounds, you would be surprised how quickly you can use up those thousand addresses. So as always, remember to back up your wallet regularly. And that's it for Dash Detailed this week. Pretty please follow us on Twitter and shoot an email to amanda at dash.org if you've not yet subscribed for a weekly email of this series. All right, I'll see you next Wednesday. Do you have a project in mind to improve Dash's ecosystem? Check out this video, which tells you how to put in a proposal to receive treasury funding to get your Dash-related project lifted off the ground.